Living with type 1 diabetes is a full-time job. Now that's on top of the job that pays your salary, on top of your social life, and on top of all your other commitments. To control this beast of a condition successfully, you need a fair amount of discipline and ability to see into the future. And sadly, I'm only able to manage a relative amount of the former, and so far, I've done all right. Most of the time, I've made it through the night with the help of medicines, gadgets, and gizmos, which I use on a daily basis. But not everyone can be perfect, and sometimes your mind is just too full of other stuff to remember the extra test strips, lancets, or needle tips, and that, my chums, is what this video is about. The next few minutes or so will be a little walk down memory lane where we'll look back on the times that I had to make do and fashion a solution out of what I had to hand. There's so much gloating online by people with perfect blood sugar levels who always carb count and always eat the right food and never ever forget anything ever. And unfortunately, I'm not one of those people. My intentions are good. I never set out to self-sabotage. I always try my best, but sometimes my best is just not good enough. Now, if you don't have type 1 diabetes or a long-term health condition, you won't really understand how much stuff you need to have with you at all times. So, to help you understand, here's what I have to carry with me. A blood glucose tester, test strips, a finger pricker, spare lancets, an insulin pen, needle tips, and hypo snacks. And if you use an insulin pump, which I do now, that list is considerably longer. And the forgetful Jamie Lowe is expected to remember all of that and keep all supplies stocked and healthy. A recipe for disaster, right? Correct. Well, here is a few examples. So leaving the house without a blood glucose reader is pretty much game over. So after that happened to me a few times, I started to carry a spare. And as I'm saying these words, I'm actually realizing that I keep my spare in the same place as my main blood glucose reader, which completely defeats the objective. Now, this is why we realize why this video is so important. Now, one of the easiest members of the pack to backfill is the finger pricker. So if you're an insulin pen wielding type 1 diabetic, then you're probably going to have to hand some needle tips. The aim of the game is to somehow get some blood out to fulfill the demands of a thirsty blood glucose machine. And it's a bit of a nasty process and slightly more painful than using and the equipment that was you know, designed for this task. But as long as you have a few needle tips on your person, then you've got an object sharp enough to make you bleed but not cause too much of a large wound. So many of my finger prickers have gone walkabout and I've had to resort to this many times. I've sort of got it down to a slightly painful science. Spare lancets also work well as a replacement, but I usually carry a spare finger pricker to obviously ensure that I'm not stabbing myself with needle tips. So that was the easiest swap out of the way. The rest gets a bit more difficult and requires a little bit of fail safe planning to make it work. So I've already mentioned that keeping my stocks healthy can be a bit difficult to do. And the second most valuable stock next to testing strips are needle tips. Now, needle tips are in constant use if you treat your type 1 diabetes with injections. So unless you're very good at disposing of your shops quickly, usually you're going to have some used ones somewhere. A quick pat down of my pockets or a search in the bottom of my bag or, you know, the footwell of my car will usually reveal a previously used needle tip. So once I've found a pre-loved needle tip, this can now be used for an injection or, like I mentioned before, as a way to make yourself bleed for a blood test. Next up, and a new addition. Ever since I began using an insulin pump, my applicator for my cannula regularly goes for a walkabout, which is a euphemism for I lose it very often. Now, I've never actually had to do this, but I'm sure it's only a matter of time. The cannulas that I use for my pump can be inserted without the applicator. It's just a gentle jab in the right place after it's primed, and now your cannula is in, and hopefully it didn't hurt too much. So I've got to be honest, I'm not looking forward to this one, so I'll report back when I do find out what the pain factor is. So I've noticed a theme whilst making this video, and it's that these swaps or improvisations usually come with a little bit of pain. So let's move away from the pain for now and end on a sweeter note. Hypo snacks are something that all of a sudden I have loads of and then none, just like that. Like I said, I'm bad at keeping stock levels healthy. So if I'm out and I drop below four MMOs, I head to my nearest cafe or fast food restaurant and head straight for the bins. 
No, not to rummage around for any leftover sugar, but the bit near the bins, where they keep the straws, the napkins, and more importantly, the sugar packets. So these sugar packets are something that you'll find in your local coffee shop or burger place, and they'll each have an average of around four to five grams of carbs in them. So take as many as you need. Now, I'm sure that not much of this information was very useful at all, but it's been fun, hasn't it, to think back on the times when I slapped my forehead and internally screamed, God, I'm such an idiot. But there is another reason that I made this video, and it's because there are so many people online telling you how great they are, and there's not enough people sharing their mistakes. So it's good to own up to them. It makes us all feel just a little bit better, I think. And I hope that's what this video has done. So I'd love to know some of your type one diabetes mistakes. So if you feel up to sharing them, why don't you leave a comment in the comment section below but that is all for this video. I'll see you next time.